Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video. Shiny Pokemon hunting is something that most of us do after we're done with the game. It might be annoying, it might be time consuming, and incredibly boring at times, but it's all worth it when we finally find that rare alternate color Pokemon. In this video I want to talk about hunting for shiny Pokemon in Sword and Shield. I want to talk about the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon and about the ways to increase these odds further. Specifically, I want to talk about random encounters and breeding with the Masuda method, which are the two natural ways to hunt for shinies in Sword and Shield. I am aware of the exploits you can do with Raid Dance by messing with the date on the Switch and whatnot, but I won't talk about those in this video. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. To begin with, the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon in Sword and Shield is 1 in 4096, which is the same odds we've had since Generation 6. With the shiny charm, you can cut these odds down to roughly 1 in 1,365. I definitely recommend getting the shiny charm before you start shiny hunting because the charm will make the process faster and more efficient. To get the shiny charm, you have to complete your national Pokedex, which is the same as in previous generations. This means owning every single Pokemon in the national decks. This is easier in Sword and Shield than it has been in the past because there are only 400 Pokemon in the national decks. You don't have to own them all at the same time. The moment you acquire a Pokemon, your Pokedex will register it and it will remain registered even if you trade the Pokemon away. Once you complete your Pokedex, head to Searchester. You want to enter Hotel Leonia, the left side, take the elevator up. Once you exit the elevator, go left until you get to the farthest door. Inside this door, you will find a scientist who will award you with the shiny charm provided you have your complete national dex. Now that we have discussed the odds, let's talk about how to increase them. So the first method I want to talk about is random encounters. When you run into a Pokemon in the wild, there is a chance that this Pokemon will be shiny. The odds of this are the ones I discussed before. However, there is a way to increase these odds. Basically, you want to run into the same species of Pokemon repeatedly and you want to defeat or catch it. To begin the process, choose the Pokemon that you want to shiny hunt. Then find the area where it spawns the most. Go there and start battling the Pokemon. In my case, for instance, I wanted to find a shiny Golisopod. So, I went to the wild area, I went to the Lake of Outrage, and I made sure that the weather was rainy. During the rain in the Lake of Outrage, Golisopod will spawn pretty frequently. So I, I went there and I started battling Golisopods over and over again, defeating it every time I ran into it. You can also catch it, but I wouldn't recommend this because then your box will be filled up and that's, you know, unnecessary. So... Defeat the Pokemon over and over again, because what will happen is that the more you defeat of the same species, the higher the chances that you will run into that species shiny. In order to get a, an increase, you need to get up to at least 50. The moment you battle and defeat at least 50 of that species, then your odds will drop down to 1 in 2048 without the charm, and with the charm it will be 1 in 1024. You can continuously do this, and it will... Your chances will increase when you get to 100 defeated, 200 defeated, 300 defeated, and it'll cap out at 500 defeated, at which point your odds will be 1 in 682.6667 without the charm, or 1 in 512 with the shiny charm. The Pokedex will actually track the current amount of Pokemon that you have battled of that species, so simply go to your Pokedex, find the Pokemon, Click on it and it'll appear numbers battled and you'll get a number. Keep in mind that it will cap out at 999. So beyond this, you will have to keep count yourself if you, like me, want to know how much it takes to find the shiny. Additionally, you can also chain the specific Pokemon you want. This is similar to the catch combos in Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. If you catch or knock out the same species of Pokemon continuously, you can increase your odds even more. The maximum chain number is 25, at which point your odds of finding a shiny Pokemon will be 1 in 455. Keep in mind this number is with the shiny charm and after having battled at least 500 of the same species. If you run into a different Pokemon than the one you're chaining, simply run away. Defeating or catching a different Pokemon will break the chain. And now we can talk about breathing with the Masuda method. The Masuda method is named after Yunichi Masuda, who coded it into the game starting with Generation 4. For the Masuda method to take effect, you must breed two Pokemon that originated in different language versions of the game. For example, breeding a Japanese Cinderace with a North American Cinderace. 
The odds of breeding a shiny Pokemon are the same ones I discussed in the beginning, but with the Masuda method, you can increase the odds of hatching a shiny Pokemon to 1 in 683 without the shiny charm, and 1 in 512 with the charm. To get a Pokemon in a different language, you will want to trade online. So, let me give you a couple of tips that you will want to keep in mind when breeding with the Masuda method. First, consider your breeding partners. The two Pokemon must be compatible breeders. This means belonging to the same egg group. You don't have to breed the same species of Pokemon. For example, if you want to get a shiny Scorbunny, you don't need to breed two Cinderaces. You can breed a Cinderace with a Pokemon that belongs to either the field egg group or the human-like egg group. So, for example, you can breed a Cinderace with a Hitmonlee, and you can still get a Scorbunny. Do keep in mind, however, that when you're breeding Pokemon that are of different species, the Pokemon that you're going to get from the egg is determined by the mother or the female Pokemon. So in this case, if you want a shiny Scorbunny, the Cinderace must be female. Though, if you're breeding with Hitmonlee, which is the example I gave, Hitmonlee can only be male. So in this case, the Cinderace can only be female in order to breed. But it was just an example. You can breed two Pokemon that are of different species if they belong to the same egg group. But remember that the female has to be the, of the same species of the shiny that you want. There is an easy way to bypass all of this, of course, which is Ditto. Because Ditto can transform, Ditto can breed with every single Pokemon that is capable of breeding. And because Ditto is also genderless, this means that the gender of the other Pokemon does not matter. So, this means that the best way for you to do the Masuda method is to get a Ditto in another language. Because then, it doesn't matter what shiny you want to hunt, you can always count on your Ditto. The next tip I want to give you is that you have to get the Obo Charm. So in order to get the Obo Charm, you have to beat the game, meaning you have to defeat Champion Leon. Afterwards, head to Searchester. It's basically the same as the Shiny Charm. You want to head into Hotel Leone on the left side, you want to get into the elevator, and then once you're out of the elevator, you want to head left. But instead of going to the room at the end of the hall, you want to go into the first door to the left. Inside, there will be a police officer NPC. Talk to him and he will challenge you to a battle. He has level 65 Pokemon and it'll be a double battle. So if you just finish the game, be ready for a fight. Once you defeat him, he will give you the Obo Charm. And what does the Obo Charm do? Basically, whenever you leave two Pokemon in the daycare to compatible breeders, the Obo Charm will increase the chances that the daycare lady will find an egg. Meaning that when you're breeding with the Masuda method in order to get a shiny, the Obo Charm will make it so that you get more eggs, which means that the whole process will go by a lot faster. The next tip that I want to give you is that you need to get a Pokemon that has the ability Steam Engine or Flame Body. Colossal, which is the Pokemon that I use, can have both of these abilities, and its free evolutions can also have both of these abilities, and Sislipede and Scorch can have Flame Body as their hidden ability. So, what does Flame Body and Steam Engine do? Basically, whenever a Pokemon that has one of these two abilities leads the party, any eggs that you have in your party will hatch twice as fast. So, when you combine this with the Obo Charm, you will get eggs a lot more frequently from the daycare lady, and these eggs will hatch a lot faster with Flame Body or Steam Engine, meaning that the whole process of hatching a shiny Pokemon with the Masuda method will be a lot faster. The final tip I want to give you is in relation to the IBs, or the individual values of the Pokemon you breed. If you want your shiny Pokemon to have high IBs so that you can use it for competitive battling, then you will want to get breeding partners that have high IB so that the offspring can inherit them. Ditto, once again, comes in very handy for this. A Ditto with 4 to 6 perfect IBs will be a very valuable breeding partner since you can breed any shiny you want with high IBs. Give the Destiny Knot to one of the Pokemon. You can get the Destiny Knot for 10 battle points at the South Pokemon Center in Hammerlock. The Destiny Knot makes it so that 5 IBs at random will be passed down from the parents. So in my case, my foreign ditto only has four perfect IBs. So what I do is, whatever shiny I want, I get the breeding partner with the most IBs that I currently have, and I make them breed. The moment I get an offspring that has more IBs than the parent, I immediately swap them out so that I can keep getting more and more. Because the more perfect IBs you have between the two parents, the higher the chances that the offspring will then have all their IBs perfect. Of course, there is hyper training, meaning that even if you don't get a completely perfect shiny Pokemon, you can still get them up to competitive battling standards, but that costs bottle caps, and if, like me, you're breeding a bunch of shinies, then 
you're going to have to spend a lot of time at the battle tower if you're going to be maxing all of them. So, with a little bit of preparation, you can end up saving a lot of bottle caps and time in the long run. And there you have it. Those are the odds of finding a shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield and the ways that you can increase those odds further so that you can get the shiny Pokemon that you want. Here at the end, I just want to briefly mention my opinions on both methods after using both of them extensively to hunt for shiny Pokemons. In my opinion, the Masuda method is the fastest and most effective way to get shinies. The only problem with it is that it is boring because just running around hatching eggs can get tiresome fast. And it is more tedious because you have to fill up your boxes with extra Pokemon that you don't need until you find the eventual shiny. And then you have to go back and clear those boxes once you run out of inventory so that you can continue to breed. What I do now is that I take a pause every now and then to clear whatever I have so that it doesn't end up becoming, you know, boxes upon boxes filled up with extra Pokemon. Which means that it's less efficient, yes, because I have to take a pause every now and then, but it's better than having to clear 10 plus boxes at a one time so that I can get back to the, to the shiny hunt. And also another advantage of the Masodo method is that you can breed for IVs, which means that in the long run, all of your shinies, it will be faster and easier to get them up to competitive battling standards. Now, as far as the random encounter method goes, it is a lot more time consuming. In order to get up to 500 Pokemon battled of that one species, it's going to take you a while. Yes, once you do and you chain that Pokemon, the odds are higher than the Masudo method, but it is a lot more time consuming. Like I said, by the time you get to 500 and you chain up to 25, you probably already have hatched hundreds of eggs and probably already found the shiny that you wanted. Plus, this is very dependent on the same Pokemon appearing multiple times. And sometimes the Pokemon that you want doesn't spawn as frequently as you would want, meaning that it ends up taking a lot longer. And there are some Pokemon that you don't want to hunt with the random encounter method because they have an encounter rate of like 1% or 2%. So to get to 500 is going to take an eternity. The only thing that I can say of this method is that it is a lot more fun because you're running around actually running into Pokemon and battling them is a lot more entertaining than just running around in your bicycle hoping to hatch the eggs. So overall, I still feel the Masuda method is better and it has gotten me the most shinies. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, a like would be super appreciated. Subscribe for more Pokemon Sword and Shield videos and I will leave links at the end of the video for all the shinies that I found and I've posted on my channel. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.